Good afternoon. So a couple of people have asked uh, information about the crates that we use. Each crate holds 32 cubic feet. Four crates is one quart. That works out. It's also ideal for the size that we put in the kiln because we can get eight crates. These eight crates can go in the kiln so we can process and dry down two cords at a time. We make our own and I saw all the lumber myself or ourselves, Gina and I, we both do it. The length is 48 inches, the width is 32 inches. So to make the a pallet, just a pallet itself, you need one two by four for the, th the three base pieces. And then on, on the bottom, you run uh, a one by four on both ends. And then on the top, there's four pieces. It could be one by four, it could be one by six, you know, whatever you have on hand. Here you can see, that's like a slab end. It's, it doesn't really make a piece of lumber, but so I saved the slab ends off the mill and I use them for making pallets. So you need three one by fours and one two by four to make a pallet. So then there's the uprights. We call these the uprights and this determines the height of space from the underside of here to the pallet is 36 inches. And so two rows, 48 by 36, two rows, 16 inches is 32 cubic feet. We call these the tops, and these are the cross pieces to provide structural support. They're still a bit wobbly, but pretty good. I mean, I only drive one nail in the top, and it's into the end of a piece of basically one by three. If I was using one by six here for the uprights, and one by six for the tops. You could use two or three nails or you could use screws if you wanted to. Uh, it would be a little bit better this way, but for our experience, carting these around the yard and into the kiln, uh, it's the minimum amount necessary to keep them together. Now, when we first started building these, they're was a different way that we made that. I'm just trying to see if we have one here. Well, maybe this one. Okay, now this one is a bit of a, a Frankenstein. So, initially the upright was just nailed into here with a long uh, three inch nail. Not a, a full, like a, like a, a three inch construction nail. It was a three inch nail from a, a nailing gun. They're a bit thinner. So, one nail, drove this into here, and that allowed that to stay on there. And we had one brace and we had our tops. It was a very minimal amount to get them to stay together. But eventually the single nail here fails. And so then I you know, if the board is still good, I just take a short piece, drive two nails here, two here, and then that allows me to use this piece until it fails. Uh, over here on this one, the upright was like this one. It failed eventually. And uh, so then I pull in a, a proper length one. So basically it's 36 inches from here up, and here's about four or five inches. It, it, it varies as random, there's no specific length, but I just want them big long enough to get two nails in. So, you know, four inches is plenty. So 36 and four, a 40 inch upright is plenty length. Cross pieces, uh, again, scrap wood. They, again, can be any length. Uh, you do want to crisscross them for that to, to keep them because they will rack this way fairly easily so doing the crisscross helps the tops so like I said the pallet is 48 these inch boards are outside of the pallet nailed on the outside of the pallet so an inch there and an inch here so 48 plus 2 is 50 so that's how long these are and that's about it so we stack 16 inch 
wood in those, two rows, four of them make a cord. For 14 inch, which is here. So we also use the same size crate for 14s. But to get 128 cubic feet of stacked wood, for 14 inch wood, you need four and a half crates. So for 16 inch wood, you need four crates, each 32 cubic feet. And the same size crate, for 14 inch, you need four and a half crates. So this is uh, the crate we use for 12 inch. It's the same length and width as the 16s and the 14s, but it's taller because we only do two rows when we're stacking the 12s. And to get a cord of wood in four crates for 12 inch, it has to be higher. So it's four feet wide, four feet tall. So that's 16 cubic feet for one stack, 16 cubic feet for the other stack, and there's 32 cubic feet. So when you're moving the 14 inch and 16 inch around, uh, we just do a band, band strap around. It's a removable strap, a reusable strap too. We've been using them over and over for years. So you can see these yellow straps. This is a crate of 14 inch. So the strap goes on with a buckle. Easy to take apart, easy to put together. Uh, for the 12 inch, same thing. You can see it's four feet wide, four feet high. But with the 12 inch, this is something we just thought of the other day. We took some old rebar that we have lying around and we, we stack the wood and when it's ready to put the yellow strap on it, we put a, a four by four, we cut a, a four by eight foot rebar in half and you can see on one end pieces stick out on the other end we bend them over so that this is actually only about 44 inches it just makes it easy to drop 44 inches down into here so we do the same for all of them it doesn't get hung up trying to fit it down inside so one on either side and then we do the yellow strap and we don't need to bother with the bottom. The bottom is pretty solid and steady. It's here that gets wobbly when you're trying to transport it. It's over the yard. So uh, we come up with this, it's working great. So that's our solution for handling tall crates of wood. So yeah, I hope all that made sense. That's how we do it. Time to go sort some wood.